All right, let's go ahead and intro part three. Hello, everyone, and welcome. If you're watching this uh, live, thanks for being here. But if you're watching this as the highlight for part three of Live Letter 30, oh, not 33, 60, 66. It's four in the morning. We've been doing this all day. But uh, guys, we're going to be talking about these changes. You can see here clearly on the screen, HQ item removal. I think this is going to be really kind of an interesting topic so it's be sure to, thumbnail. yeah thank you <laughs> <laughs> be sure to weigh in on the in the comments of what you guys are thinking about this section like favorite subscribe and share to work the game and also all other channels we got gaming kind of ginger gaming radio and ginger prime let's dive into it chris they're removing hq items let's actually get oh into the oh my detail. god pause everything this light made, the world on fire i was uh, like what the it. hell all <laughs> that right, was my reaction right. Scroll down just Let's get a little into the here. detail. Okay. There will be some items that are no longer available as high quality. Uh, I am over 20 hours into a stream during which I went and got two resplendent gathering tools. And I can tell you um, this would make that experience different. I can see parts of it as positive and parts as negative. A lot of this is we'll just have to wait and see. Um, but there are certain items that are no longer available as high quality. Those will be all those items I gathered for the resplendent gathering tools, all the things that come off of enemy drops all the token exchange materials and non-craftable materials. If you still have high quality and you go into Endwalker, they will stay high quality. They're not going to downgrade it. But you've always been able to right click lower quality and then you can do that and merge the stacks if you're in 6.0 because it will all do nothing except, except not stack. Um, so you'll have to have to condense it down anyway. And I can tell you, I generated something like 350 inventory slots past what I could sell off. And a lot of that is there's a high quality and normal quality version of every single freaking thing. Uh, and so, but doesn't this nerf the entire crafting system? No, all the intermediary steps will still create that complexity. Gear will still be able to com be com created at half uh, at, at high quality. Um, and so those remain functionally unchanged. Those have not changed at all. Um, so it will affect things like doesn't this make gathering a lot simpler yes because we have a number of of abilities that affect how our high quality works um mm -hmm. and those will be adjusted to increase yield but we already have things for yield so i mostly just have questions they did say fishing was going to move to something that made more sense i'm hoping weight um in my mind uh but, you know, I mean, collectability works fine, I guess, but I'm hoping wait. And it will set a different parameter was the phrase that they used. Um, quests, challenge log entries and achievements requiring high quality will be adjusted. I'm hoping to something with collectibles. I think it's weird that we don't have more in that way. Yeah. But all of this will be in the next live letter, which is November 5th. November 5th. Um, two oh, weeks yeah. out from early access. So that's a big deal. Now, this one, this is this is where the Internet's going to explode. Well, this Before is like this. we were getting some hot debates. I think I lost a lot of subscribers on Ginger Prime because people are mad that teleportation fees are no longer going to be capped at 99 and they're going to be calculated based off of the distance. Okay. Uh, and so essentially you're seeing teleportation prices fall across the board, but they're also going up in certain places. And the question is, is like, is this fair for players? The Essentially the term average player in the game itself. So the... Previously, they had an algorithm for calculating distance between points, but it was capped at 9999. They've released that cap so things can go as high as they go. What does this do? Well, while I was doing all that gathering today, I probably spent at least 200,000 gil in teleport fees. It would have been much more. Um, so for the people that say it's hurting the casual player, just think of all those materials I generated, and I would now have an additional 200,000 dollars in 200,000 gil in buying power. So it scales. Um, and when I ran my leveling roulette today, I got almost 12,000 gil for running my leveling roulette. And then I decent all the loot that I found in it. And that actually sold on the market board for another over th like 30,000 gil. So I made 42,000 gil in 20 minutes. Currently cookie dailies with high quality, which is, is going to change the way all that stuff works but currently that's 108,000 gil a day and yoshi p has said that cookie dailies will not even be worth doing compared to what we can do in in endwalker of course maybe he meant that was because he was going to delete high quality so i don't know but that is somewhere in the ballpark of 75 teleports from costa del sol to kugane or 650 uh, for the lowest price shown here from costa del sol to camp bronze lake this is not a big deal I said all of that to say this is not a big deal. This is not a problem. 
give our money use. This is going to drive up the value of hunts so that we can have these teleportation tickets. They said teleportation tickets are going to change how they work. Um, hopefully that makes that system more interesting. I hope they get tracked in a currency tab. So I'm not carrying the fact that there's going to be multiple kinds. Um, it's going to be based on distance. It's going to be fine. Yeah. All, other games, uh, all have that aspect to it. More distance equals higher fee in that regards. And I think the only thing that the people are upset about is that it's actually a change and, uh, they're, they're forgetting that when you're leveling and you're playing and the average player, et cetera, they're not traveling, you know, to Kugane right from the start. So they're spending very little guilds and the game's throwing gil. Throwing gil. And then essentially it's going to then incentivize a lot of things. It equal, it hits everybody equally. So ultimately like players who are like, oh, I've got gil. So they're just teleporting around and, you know, put, making that donation. Uh, that's going to help keep inflation down. And it's then going to help benefit the average player so that when they come in and play the game, there's just not this absorbent amount of gill in the system that prevents them from engaging with the markets in the first place. So I think overall, it's actually going to benefit the average player more than it's going to uh, theoretically, you know, impact them negatively. Yeah, rampant inflation hurts people who play less because what happens is you sell something for today's value and then you go to spend that money six months from now and that amount of money no longer means anything because we've all continually made money and never had to give it up. So everything has gone up in price. And so um, the inflation rates of MMOs is alarming when you compare it to real world examples. Uh, but they went on and on about like, why do we charge for anything? Well, we're constantly giving you an infinite supply of money from quests, kills and all that indefinitely. Um, there has to be a back and forth. This has to be a cycle. It can't just all go out and never come back. Um, and then lore wise, of course, you know, you can say it's Ethernet maintenance and all that. But speaking of Ethernet, the Ethernet UI inside of Capital Cities, super, oh, super dude. cool. This UI update is what I've envisioned this. And they said they've been working on this for a long time. So this wasn't an easy fix. And if anybody's used to the menu, now you can go and click on it and it brings up the map. So you don't have to have these memorizations of what, okay, this one's this place or this one's this place. It literally brings up the map. You can select where you want to go through a drop down menu on the left side, or you can click on where you want to go on the right hand side. Like from it, anywhere. From anywhere. Not even like, from a crystal. Well, I think to ask, right. access the Ethernet. open it up, right? Oh yeah. To open it up, you access the Ethernet. Okay. So you, you, yeah. So it is still the Ethernet system. Um, because the map. That's what I was asking earlier. Well, the map system that. already works like that. You pull up your, the map and you just can click on an Etherite and teleport there but this is within the city which is great because it brings up the city map so you see exactly where you want to go yeah it's this is huge and they even showed quest markers on some of them so like yeah. it was like a live map because sometimes i feel like the, the gathering maps don't like i can see the gathering map but then it doesn't show my quest icon so it seems to be like a live map like it's a live map where the quest i was um it just seemed way better just across the board it just looked way better um now, Fisher's intuition, uh, when you're talking about big fish, one of the problems they've had with the auto logout thing is that like, if you're waiting for certain weather conditions, so you're just kind of sitting there idle because you don't want to jam your inventory up, uh, you get logged out and that, that ruins your progress. So what they've done there is that just won't, this won't be in effect till uh, 6.0, but they've just said, Fisher's intuition just won't fall off from logging out. It'll just keep building and that'll avoid penalizing them. Um, and then due to congestion, obviously like they can't let you create a character on Aether. They sure as crap can't let primal and crystal people just come over and they don't want us going there either so um unfortunately data center is, is going to have to be after 6.0 um i think that makes a ton of sense it makes sense uh, but it's no less disappointing so yeah. hopefully they're able to get their silicon yeah, they talked about they talked about it later here but talking about like we looked into the cloud uh there's certain things that it would give us but there's just it would actually cost us way more the game wasn't engineered with cloud servers in mind so you know, being that they're in it for the long haul, they don't, they're not worried about scaling up super fast and scaling down super fast. So they want to, they want to own it. They don't, they don't want to sit here and rent their servers. They want to own yeah. their servers. So they talked about, they've looked into, you know, possible cloud partner. They've looked at all sorts of things. Um, they, they're just, they are where they are. Yeah. Um, tough spot. So now what's upcoming? Tokyo Game Show, uh, October 3rd. I don't know why they went in this order. So that'll be, um, Yoshipi will be going and visiting houses. But uh, October 2nd, the day before this, um, Yoshipi will be giving a talk, um, and it will be live translated. And so talking about the appeal and potential of a RPG. So I, that definitely seems worth, worth tuning into. Um, with November 5th jumping out, 
We do have the next live letter. Uh, remember that in between there, they said mid-October, there will be a media tour embargo um, lifting. That's all they said. Uh, and then <laughs> uh, the that next live letter will address Disciple of Hand, Disciple of Land, PVP, system-related updates. The weapon design competition going on right now will end October 4th. Right now, there is a 50% off on um, collector's edition. So if you want to go back and get some of those mounts, I know I'm missing a Realm Reborn and Heaven's Word, I've always been on the fence. So if you want to go get those, like that top left one there, that's Stormblood. Top right, that's, uh, I don't remember which one. Bottom right is, uh, is Shadowbringers. So like these different items that you mm -hmm. get could be, could be worth picking up if you've always been on the fence on that. That'll be through September 30th, so you don't have to decide today. Um, there's a whole bunch of new merch. They pushed a ton of new merch. Um, new albums and and vinyls and... A doll. A doll. That's like $1,000. And won't be here for a year. Um, the Final Fantasy 15 crossover event going on right now. Um, back scratchers. Back scratcher. Oh, I was just scrolling. Uh, I didn't pins. know if I had a, that. Yeah, yeah, that. yeah. Sorry, I didn't, right. I didn't so the Final moment. Fantasy 15 crossover event ends October 18th. Uh, get your car, get your car, get your car, get your car, get your car. The Dragon Quest uh, collab is coming back. We haven't had yes. that in four years. That'll come back on October 19th through November 11th. Um, so, th so through the week before the expansion. So that's um, that's worth doing. That had a big goofy helmet that I still have in some retainer somewhere. Uh, a couple of them. And, you know, a, a minion and yeah nice little stuff so i think that's i think that's it oh yeah um, we, we had all the stuff that they're for, they've got yeah, a lot of stuff for sale they got a lot of merch and, and a calendar in case your computer does not or your phone does oh, not those have. dolls are expensive because they're high quality Chats well and it, they're like yeah, this they, is custom made right. because you the pre-orders end in november this year and then they they will deliver them by december next year so like that is that is quite a you know quite a trip but a different kind of collab so that brings us to the end of, I mean, that's, that's everything they talked about. Chris, did we make it an hour? We've made it more than an hour, an hour and five minutes. So oh, we've almost, we've, almost, I know you said Six you're going to, you're going to try hour. to go summarize this for gaming kind of even faster. I mean, we got it down to a sixth of the time. I'd love to maybe, maybe see if I can cut that down by half again. Yeah. <laughs> so go subscribe to gaming kind and see if Chris can get it done. I'm sure the comments are going to be like, why are you going so fast? <laughs> I can predict it now. What's what, what would be your top three takeaways from uh, this, this live letter? Um, it, they continually reminded us that a lot of these system changes that people are worried about, they said within a couple minutes or a couple hours, you're going to realize that it, it's, it's fine. That you're just immediately going to feel at home. Uh, all of the jobs look like they're getting some love. And so the jobs that literally look like the, the losers in here is because they didn't have information. Mm -hmm. It wasn't because something bad happened. It was just, I just have more questions. Um, so I think scholar and bard looked like I had the most questions because they had the shortest yeah. portion of the presentation. So, you know, let's at least wait for the media tour and then let's wait for the freaking content. Um, I think, you know, I was already ready to play Endwalker and 63 days felt like an unbelievably short amount of time. And now 63 days feels longer. So somehow I've been streaming for 24 hours and I feel like Endwalker has gotten further away. Um, Cause I'm excited. And this is all before we talk about narrative This is before we talk about story. This is before this is the, the, the content, right? People talk about story being the most important part as this kind of, but when you look at the total number of hours we spend in the game, it's a very small percentage. The thing we're going to be spending most of our time doing an Endwalker. I'm really excited about all that stuff. Um, I'm pumped. I still want to know what Island Sanctuary is. Yeah, no, no <laughs> word on that. And we said if we don't hear about Island Sanctuary, it doesn't sound like we're going to hear about it in the next live letter. It's definitely not a 6.0 feature. It's going to be a, I would assume, a 6.1, 6 6.2 and a half, some kind of feature of that regards. Uh, for me, I would say my takeaways are uh, Summoner, Sage, and Reaper. Like that, that's essentially like I'm okay. really thrilled. Uh, to check out those jobs and summer just kind of blew me away uh so we got a special super chat thanks for the uh five spot M uh, michael saying any housing updates we have ha had housing updates but they didn't really dive into it here right none of it today we're moving to have a lottery alternative for some wards um there will be ishgard restoration housing at some point we believe that's 6.1 but it was not ever confirmed for that we knew it was sometime after 6.0 so no need to announce it here because 
we've got we've got we have two live letters between 6.0 and 6.1 to address that stuff. Um, so I would I would set that aside for there. Remember, there's a big gap between 6.0 and 6.1 because we have all 6.0. Then we have 6.05. So like the months will will go fast, but like it's a lot of content to get through. So mm -hmm. they're going to spend their time talking about the mountain of content that we're going to get before 6.1 gets here. Yeah. So that like Chris said. Some of the housing system is going to remain as it exists now. They're going to introduce the lottery system for like another part of it. And uh, yeah, and then Nishgard housing is going to be added. So ultimately, we hope that also Island Sanctuary kind of solves some of this, you know, problem. But um, yeah, nothing for you concrete right now for that. We did the Dragon Quest go lab last year. I don't remember that. But if it helps, I don't remember leaving my house last year. So I don't maybe I just don't remember. Oh, man. I People said we had I've the Halloween it. event last year. And I was like, no, we didn't. No, we did not. Before. Yeah, the Halloween was. We had like a tribute to it in the Gold Saucer, and we and had then, yeah. a callback to it uh, to it missing in the Christmas event. Yeah, and we will have the Halloween event this year, but it's not going to be till after Endwalker. They're going to have it's a, technically not a Halloween event, right? So they can do it whenever they want. Yep. So that's uh, that's going to wrap us up, guys. Thanks so much for everybody hanging out live with us over here for the podcast itself. If you're listening in MP3 audio, we we love you. We thank you for uh, for checking out the show. And hopefully you guys enjoy and check out the other uh, shows that we have here for you. And then if you're here on uh, Work to Game, you are awesome. We love you very much. And we thank you for listening. But for Crystal Core Radio, episode 90, what a big show to do for Live Letter 66. This has been Brian and Chris for Work to Game. Hopefully you have a fantastic day. Hopefully we'll see you in our next one. But until then, take care.